Hello, hello, hello. Greetings to each and every one of you. God bless you. Let me know how you guys have been. Hello, Chantal, the wisdom seeker. Jalissa, bless you. Sierra, thank you for sharing. Cecilia, bless you. Hot June. Talia, how are you doing? Let me know how you guys are as you make your way on the Periscope. Oh, we thank God. You're good, blessed. Amen. I wanted to get on here and just do a short scope on the need for fundamentals. Hello, bless you, Angela. Elijah, bless you. The need for the fundamentals in our walk with God. As soon as you get on, do me a favor and share this. Tap the button, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it on Periscope. Invite your followers as we begin. Would you be happy in heaven if someone you love was in hell? Yes, I would be happy in heaven. You can't be sad around God. Glory to God. You can't be upset in the, in the presence of, of God. So you're not going to guilt trip me <laughs> into saying no, I wouldn't. I will be happy. I'll be worshiping my Father in heaven. Amen. Don't be religious about it. If you love them enough, you'll pray for them while you're on the earth so that they will come into salvation. But at the end of the day, we will all be judged individually and accordingly. And as long as I've shared the gospel, I've watched, I've washed the blood off of my hands. Amen. Your responsibility is to share the gospel to them and to pray and to intercede for them. And if you do so with faith, God has saved them. That's, but that's a different teaching. If you haven't shared this, share this. This is Ugo. I want to speak about the fundamentals of Christ, why it's important. Amen. Let me know if you hear me. If you see me, I feel as if it's a bit blurry, but y'all going to have to bear with me. I don't think I cleaned the lens well enough. But I want to speak about the fundamentals. Um, a lot of times what happens in our walk with Christ, you know, I'll answer questions at the end. A lot of times what happens in our walk with Christ is that we, we see people who jump right into the things of God um, with the right motives or the right intentions but they go about it in what the Bible calls um, zeal without knowledge. What what I say? Zeal without knowledge. And it is extremely important for each and every single one of us as believers to make sure that we are rooted in the doctrines of Christ. It is extremely important for each and every one of us to make sure that we are stable when it comes to the fundamentals of our Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? Because what happens, what the Lord showed me, is that what happens is that we, that we know that Christ is the foundation. The Bible says that any man, no, no, no foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus? I believe that is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, as Jesus is the foundation of our faith, it is us who build upon that foundation. And the Bible says what? And the Bible says that even as we build upon that foundation, we have the options to build with gold. We have the options to build with silver. We have the option to build with precious stones. Or we also have the ability to build with hay, with wood, or with stubble. Why is this important? Because three of those objects are 
will are consumed in fire while the other three are unconsumable. Because the Bible says what? That all of our works will be tried with fire. Get me? All of our, everything we do, everything we learn, every knowledge that we acquire will be tried with fire, not only in heaven during the day of judgment at the mercy seat of Christ, but will be tried with fire on this very earth. So what happens a lot of times is that... um. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of a man, of someone who skipped leg day, leg day, leg day, glory to God. You know, um, oftentimes they're bulky up top, you know, they got muscles up top, the shoulders are broad, they've got pecs, you know, their chest is bulking out, but then when you look below the waist, they could be a stick figure when it comes to their legs. You know, and and we say such people what such, such people have skipped leg day, so um a lot of believers are skipping leg day when it comes to their walk with Christ. And how do you do this? Because a lot of times we see people. Listen to me. We see people who've gotten to a certain realm in God, a certain realm in faith, a certain realm in their walk with Christ, and we desire their fruit without desiring the seeds which they've sown. We desire their fruits without desiring their level of sacrifice. We desire their manifestations without desiring what, what they've gone through in order to get to where they are. Let me understand. Let me see if you... I hope you're understanding me. Glory to God. And this is dangerous. Why? This is dangerous because a majority of the time we get into what the Bible calls a, a, a form of godliness. We see something with the face value, but we don't necessarily come in contact with or understand the power behind it. Amen. And we desire the flashy things. You know, I want to know how to prophesy. I want to know how to cast out devils. I want to know how to heal the sick. I, know, I want to know how to preach. I want to know how to do all these things, but I don't even know if I'm saved sometimes. You know, you want to cast out devils, but um, you wake up half the time and you don't know if you're saved or not. Oh, is you know, I want to prophesy, but you know, um, does God still love me? That shows an imbalance. That shows you truly don't know the fundamentals of your walk with God. So your faith can never be exercised to the level of operating in such gifts and bearing such fruits successfully. Successfully. Let me know if you follow me. Amen. So what we have is a bunch of believers who are into flashy things. But the moment they begin to be tried. Oh, you see this person, great man of God, great woman of God, they're doing this, they're doing that, but they never learn the fundamentals of the gospel. So the moment trials and tribulations begin to hit you, you see yourself falling. Because you're so bulky up top that the moment someone just taps you, you fall. Everybody sees you, you're jacked up, look at what he's doing, look at what she's doing. But you're not firmly rooted. The Holy Spirit just spoke to me. And he says that, his, that our faith in God should look like a glacier. I just heard that clearly. It should look like a, like a glacier. For those of you who know what a glacier is. You, you know that what you see um, above the water is, is an infinitesimal um part of the entire glacier so the ice that you see above the water is just a is, is little compared to the amount of ice below the water so when you see me pray when you see me cast out devils that is just a little part of my ministry which begins at home which begins with my knowledge of the word of god 
which, were, which begins with faith. And that is why it is important to not put yourself in all of these responsibilities without truly knowing God. You don't even know if you're saved yet. And you're on Periscope, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're doing all these things, but you're not even firmly rooted in Christ. You're fooling yourself. Listen to me. This is why Paul, when he received his call from Jesus, the Bible says he went to, the, he went to Arabia for three years. Nobody heard of him. How many of you have gone to Arabia? He went to Arabia for what? For three years. Receiving all types of revelations from the Holy Spirit. Receiving all types of revelations from the throne room of heaven. And then he came out. And you see the impact that he had upon the world. Because he understood. A man of God was once asked, he said, he was asked, if, if, if you knew that Jesus was coming back in, in three years, what would you do? And he said, I would spend the first two years locked up, learning about the scripture and receiving as much revelation and knowledge as I could and spend the, the, the last year doing as much as I can to draw people to God. That should be our mentality. But a lot of us have forsaken the fundamentals of our walk with God. Amen. And, and, our, our, and the Holy Spirit is emphasizing on this. Because if you want to be stable next year. You're going to have to learn these things. You can't go into next year. You know desire. I want to be blessed. I want to be this. I want to be that. When you still wake up. Not knowing if you're saved or not. I want God to do this for me. I want God to do that for me. If you wake up asking if God loves you. Oh you know. I fell. I don't know if God still loves me anymore. That shows that you're not at a certain level of maturity. Amen. I want to, I want to read this. Hebrews chapter 6. And Hebrews 6 chapter um, verses 1 and 2 speak of six fundamental doctrines that every believer should know. I'm going to name them. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, principles, let us go on to perfection. What does that show? That there are certain things that you must come to understand if you desire to be perfected in Christ. The Bible says an, unba an, an unjust balance is an abomination unto God. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. That is a number one doctrine. I'm going to ask you guys, what does repentance from dead works mean? How many of you know that? How many of you know this doctrine? Know what it means to, be, to repent from dead works? I'm waiting. I want to hear your answers. I want to hear your answers. Hebrews chapter 6 from verses 1 to 2. What is repentance from dead work? Just give me a short summary in line. Let me know what you think it is. The first fundamental doctrine of Christ is what? Repentance from dead works. Someone says is using works to be in right standing with God. Living for God outside of victory. I want to hear what you guys think. Because this is, is what? Is, 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 is very important in your walk with God. If you understand this doctrine. It sets you free from the bond of religion and tradition. That's a hint. Asking for forgiveness and doing the same sin again. Not by works lest we boast. The cross. Turn away from doing works without faith. Acting rude inappropriately, inappropriately, but saying you love God. Someone said, I believe that was Anna. Not by works lest we boast. When the Bible speaks of repentance from dead works, it is referring to what? 
it is referring to using works as your means of salvation. Amen. A lot of people think it's repentance from sin. Although repentance from sin is very important, but the Bible says what? The first fundamental doctrine is what? Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Towards God. They go hand in hand, those two. It means that what? Although, even though I fast for 100 days, it doesn't make me better than anyone. Even though I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to pray every day, it doesn't necessarily make me better than anyone. It is the blood of Jesus which has set me free. Amen. Let me know if you're following me. You know what? The foundation, repentance from dead works. I'll give you some examples. There are some um, religions that believe, you know, you got to go to church on a specific day. If you're in that bondage, that's... See, the Bible says this. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, you follow traditions, you follow rituals, and you believe that it's those things that give you access to God when it's not. So, so you can do something. Listen to me. I was studying this, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he took me to the verse of the Pharisee and, and a publican. The Pharisee prayed, and he said, Lord, I thank you because I'm not a sinner. I thank you because I'm not a whoremonger. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not a fornicator. I thank you because I'm this. And then he said something very important. He said, I thank you. He said, for I fast two days a week and I give all my tithes. Now, is it wrong to fast? Is it wrong to pay tithes? Of course not. But you see that if you have this mentality um, that it is those actions that draw you closer to God and make you better than other people and bring you to salvation, then you're automatically turning those works into dead works. So you're corrupting something good because of your what? Intentions. And listen to me. And some people are fasting and praying but God is resisting them because they're doing it as a form of, of salvation. When the Bible says what? The Bible says that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So you can, listen, you can be doing everything right, but God will be resisting you. Did you, did you hear me? You can be doing everything you're supposed to, but God will literally be resisting you because you're doing it in pride. Because one thing that dead works leads to is what? Pride. That's number one doctrine. Number two, faith towards God. Understanding of what? Having faith that God is more than capable of keeping you. Amen. How many of you wake up one morning and, and you say, I overslept this morning. I didn't get to pray. I know it's going to be a bad day. That's the devil. Do you understand? Oh, you know, I didn't get to pray. I forgot. I went to bed after I, sl after I woke up. I didn't pray my morning prayers at 5 o'clock. I know today is going to be a bad day. That is what the devil. Faith towards God tells you that although you may not have done what you're supposed to do at that moment, God is more than capable of keeping you. Or how many of you say, you know, um, I know people do this. You know, if I don't cry, it's not real worship. How many of you can worship without knowing the lyrics to a song? Amen. That's religious bondage. You can't worship unless it's a certain type of song, unless you're in a certain type of church, or, or unless you know the lyrics. That's a bondage. That's bondage. That's, not faith. That's faith in what you do. The Bible says, let no flesh glory in my presence, but let he that glory will glory in God. Let me know if you're hearing me. Faith towards God. The third one, the doctrine of baptisms. How many of you know what, how many baptisms we, we have? The significance of such baptisms. Amen. 
I still get questions, you know, you know, do I have the Holy Ghost if I don't speak in tongues and all of that? That shows that you don't necessarily understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There what? There are three levels of baptism. You're baptized into Christ during salvation by the Holy Spirit. You're baptized in water. Amen. You're baptized in water by a minister. And you're baptized with the Holy Spirit by Jesus. Three baptisms. But do you know that? You know, these are what fundamentals of your Christian walk. Fund what? Fundamentals. And, and too many believers are so focused on flashy things and outward shows. You know, I want to show people, I, I want to show people that I, I can do this. I want to show people that I know this. But in actuality, you're lacking because you don't, you're not firm in the foundation. The Bible says that that, that meets, the meat of the mystery of God, the meat is, is for them who have discerned who've exercised their mind to the discern of good and evil. Too many of us want flashy things, but we can't even discern its source. I want to do this, I want to do that, but we're still chasing around false prophets. Because what? You're so into the flashy things, but you're not discerned. Your mind hasn't been exercised to the discerning of good and evil. So you see something, you see the outward manifestation of it, and you're so drawn and captivated by it, but you haven't spent time in the fundamentals, therefore you cannot even know if that spirit is of God. You can't even test the spirit, because you lack the basics. If you, wanna, if you, want, if you wanna grow, amen. See, the thing about it is this, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me right now. He said, look at it this way. You have a house. How tall a structure is, is often dictated by the stability of its foundation. So a lot of us, we've seen ourselves get into a certain place in God and not being able to advance. And it's not because God doesn't want us to grow. It's not because we don't have a good heart, but because our foundation is not stable enough. And if we dare to begin to grow past that point, we see all these obstacles coming and we see us beginning to fall. You see what? We begin to waver. The Bible says, toss to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We begin to waver. And eventually, if the grace of God is not there, we don't get ourselves right, we fall down. And you understand? Did you get that? Your ability to grow. Is based on the what? How solid your foundation is. How deep does it run? How strong is it? Too many of us don't even open our Bibles. We just go to churches that, you know, we go to churches that they just pick one verse out of the Bible and preach about it. They pick one, the, the, the preacher will literally use one verse, the entire sermon, and preach. Listen, there's a time for preaching, there's a time for bucking and shouting, but there's a time for teaching. There's a time that you sit down and you learn too many of us, we have, we're so, we are unable to learn because we're so used to shallow. We're so used to being shallow. All we want to do is go to church and book and shout and dance and leave. How many of you, some of you, you can't even sit through, you know, an hour long teaching without falling asleep. If the, if the preacher don't say, if the preacher don't shout or modulate his voice or begin to sweat, you fall asleep. That's a shame. Because you're not so because you're not used to that depth of scripture. It's what it's like it's, it's, it's what we call spiritual itis. You know how you eat so much food and you eat too much and you fall asleep? Too many of us we fall asleep and and, and, and during teachings because we're not used to consuming so much word. 
So when the man of God begins to sit and begins to articulate scripture and go through the Bible and bring out verses and, and begin to teach you, you fall asleep because it's too much for you to handle. You can't take it because you're so used to itty bitty bites. You're so used to, oh, the word of God says this, and if, if, it, if, it's, if it's for you, I want you to get up and, and slap your neighbor and run around and jump and shout and dance, and you know, and you, you lead the church, your, your makeup is all over your face, your, your hair is messed up, you don't roll on the floor, and you jump up and down, but you ain't learn nothing. You ain't learn one bit. Why? <laughs> we got to do better. You haven't learned one thing. You're going to go back home with the same little amount of faith and come back the next week. Amen. We have to, listen, we must, we got to operate with wisdom. We have to love teaching. It may, it may seem boring to the, to the flesh, but the spirit man lives off of it. Man shall not live by what bread alone. But by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen. Yes, we have to love. How many of you have books? Some of you spend all this money on shoes and clothes and, and hair and makeup and haircuts and, you know, and all these things. But you, when's the last time you bought a, a book to read? A spiritual book. I'm not talking about a book on, 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 you know, because you're single, you're buying only only books on dating. You know, there's more to life than waiting for marriage. Let me tell you that much. There's more to life. Too many of y'all, you young ladies, if I go to your, your room, all I'm going to see is books on marriage and dating. Uh-uh. There's more to life than that. How many of you have got and, 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 and gotten... You have to hunger and thirst to, for knowledge, for the knowledge of the things of God. Listen to me. It's got to be a desire. Amen. You can't be so one-sided. I love the, the deliverance ministry and casting out devils, but I would be a fool to let that be the only thing I know something about. was the fourth doctrine and of laying of hands. What the doctrine, how many of you know the significance of laying of hands? Too many of you, you let anybody lay hands on you. When the Bible says what? Lay hands on no man suddenly. Every, every place you go, someone's laying hands on you. Everybody lay hands on me. You chase around people. You know, that's not of God. Even when I pray for people, I don't lay hands on them unless I'm led. I'll probably lay, I'll probably put some oil on your head. I'll lay my hand on your shoulder. But to, to, for me to lay my hand on your head, I'll, I'll, God, God has got to tell me to do that. It's not everybody you let lay hands. Because when you lay hands, when someone lays hands on you, it's a transference. How can you define laying of hands? Laying of hands, amen. It's a transference of, what, of, of what's in them. The Bible says that, the, that, that, that Moses laid hand on the 70 elders and, and, and transferred his spirit. His what? His spirit. So it's not just, you know, I lay hands on you, God comes down. No, I'm transferring something from inside of me. He transferred his spirit. His, it was shared among them when he laid hands on them. Amen. Paul said, I was listening to the audio Bible, he said somewhere, you know, that I may not only impart the things of God, but impart my soul. Glory to God. Have you ever seen a, a you know, a, a, um, a man of God, a woman of God, and every person in the ministry is almost just like them? You come under, the, under that anointing, you begin to serve them, and, and they lay hands on you. Hey, but they all sound the same. The whole church sound the same. They all talk the same. Everybody, they got the same car to pass the pastor. That's a transference of their soul. We, we have to understand the, the, the depths of these things. Literally. It's not just I'm healing you. It's a transference of, 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 of someone's spirit. Amen. It's, it's deep, y'all. Let me tell you something. I, I've seen cases prophetically. People have, have, people have gone around and had people 
lay hands on them and, and, and demons are transferring. Things are jumping in, 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 into your belly, into your womb, and you don't even know because you could not sit down. We need to sit down and, and, and get a church home. Stop running from conference to conference. Listen to me. I love conferences, but you have to sit down, get a church home, and honor someone who, who honored a shepherd above you. Stop running around. You running from, from pillar to post, lay hands on me, lay hands on me. I forget about that. Forget about Just sit down in one place and be blessed. Benny Hinn was speaking, and, and he said, when he used to have a church, he would notice that, that it, was, it was almost as if none of his members needed healing. That, that those that needed healing were always those that came from other places. Why? Because those that were seated, that, that, that were seated under him, and covered by him, naturally that grace flow down. There's certain things that you don't got to pray for. That you just sit under someone. You submit yourself. You, got, you have a covering. And naturally that grace will just begin to pour upon you as you are, as you honor them. It's powerful. You got to be serious with God. And of laying of hands and of the resurrection of the dead. How many of you know about the resurrection? Resurrection of the dead. Why are we being raised? When are we being raised? How are we being raised? What's going to happen after we're raised? The Bible says, if, if, if only in this world we have hope in Christ and our hope is in vain. But comfort yourself. Comfort one another with these words that we will all be raised. Not all shall sleep below, but all shall be changed. Amen. Listen, I'm fine with the kingdom message and people saying, you know, we are the kingdom of God on earth. That's fine at all, but it doesn't end here. There's another world to come. There's another kingdom to come. Listen, we are just, we are just bringing, what we're doing is just a foreshadow of what's to come. The same way with, that, that the Old Testament foreshadowed the New Testament, we're foreshadowing the true manifestation of the physical kingdom of God on this earth. And even when the earth passes away and the new earth is released. But how many of you know that? All you know is, you know, I got to look good. I got to dress good. I got to smell good. I got to, you know, you're doing all these things with no hope for tomorrow. And so many of you fall and so many people are falling away because why they don't know what to hope in. Because the moment you get that car you wanted, I don't got nothing else to, I don't got nothing else to look forward to. I got the car. I got the house. I got the clothes. I got the family. What else I need? I got a job. So what else do I need? Amen. Because you don't understand it's deeper than this earth. There's another world to come. The resurrection of what? The dead. Amen. The resurrection, the resurrection of the dead. Not all shall sleep. I saw, I saw a young man of God on here talking about, you know, you know, I don't even believe in the rapture. I'm like, you're a preacher? There's something is greater than you and I. I need you to understand that. But if we do not understand these fundamentals, we see our, ourselves be, you know, making a fool out of ourselves. We make a fool and of what? Eternal judgment. The last doctrine or what? eternal judgment. How many judgments are there? Some of you don't know, you know, when we're going to be judged. How are we going to be judged? Are we all going to be judged at, at the same time with unbelievers? When will we be raised? The Bible says that, there's what? that there are two resurrections. We will resurrect. The dead in Christ will resurrect. And towards the end of of the reign of God on earth, the, the reign of Christ on this earth, getting into um after the thousand year reign of Christ on earth, then the dead who weren't saved are gonna be raised, and they're gonna go through the what the great white throne judgment. But for those of us who are on this earth and die in Christ, our judgment is, is called what the mercy seat of Christ. How many of you know that you will be judged for everything you do on this earth? For all your works 
All your works will be shrouded with fire. And so many of us, we don't care about nothing. We just want to go to church on Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays and go to Bible study. But we don't, we're not doing anything substantial or tangible for the kingdom of God because we do not understand. We think that we just get saved and we go to heaven. That's it. Listen, going to heaven, that's just the basis. Listen, it's not even about going to heaven. Dying and, and seeing God, that's just the found, that's, that's just the beginning. The Bible says that we will receive crowns according to the works we, which we've done on this earth. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to be blinged out when I get to heaven. Amen. I may not wear all, too, too much gold on this earth, but when I get to heaven, I'm trying to get a crown with all the jewels in it. I don't know about you. You can call me whatever you want to. I ain't what I want. That's what I'm going to work. Too many of us want to be called what? There's a a, 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 a a picture that's circulating online where, you know, Jesus and he, he he's crying and he's crying to someone and everybody wants to call. Everybody wants to hear, well, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. How many of you actually serve? We all want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. But how many of you are actually serving? <laughs> You know, you know, how many of you are actually, and too many of us are serving, and we're not even doing what we're supposed to be doing. You're just copying somebody else. <laughs> you know, so you want to get to her heaven and have, you know, and be rewarded for somebody else's work. You just help them. <laughs> you just help them. I see you on here. Prophet. J.D. Bush. Amen. You just, you're just doing somebody else's work and you want to be rewarded for that in heaven. That ain't going to happen. But we do not know. And the church is, listen, the church is so petty because of this. We don't know the fundamentals of the doctrines of Christ. That's why the moment someone bump into you wrong, you get mad and you lead a church. I say this all the time and a lot of, a lot of other people say this. You know, if someone would have curse you out in your place of work, how many of you will quit? None of you. Because you see value. It's more than just working. It's what you're getting from it. But too many of us, we don't know these things. We're not fully rooted in the things, the doctrines, the fundamentals of Christ. So the moment something happens, we begin to blame all, oh, you know, the church is a bunch of hypocrites. They are a bunch of liars. I ain't gonna go back there. I can learn about God all on my own. The Bible says, you know, the Holy Spirit teaches me all truth. I don't need no covering. I, you know, we come up with all this and why? Just because we don't know the fundamentals. And so many of us, we, we want God to use us in great ways and we're still being chased around in our dreams by roaches. No faith. I'm not condemning you, but I'm telling you guys, a lot of things we struggle with spiritually is because we don't have, because the faith that comes from being rooted firmly in Christ isn't there. So we begin to open ourselves up to all types of spiritual warfare that we're not even ready for. Amen. We're not, we're not even ready for this. And we begin to open ourselves up because it's flashy. You know, you see people praying, I call out, you know, <laughs> principalities and powers, and I pull down strong. You don't even know what a principality is. <laughs> what is <laughs> you don't even know what it is. You're calling it that. What is a principality? What is a stronghold? Amen. We just, we just want to be flashy. <laughs> You know, it's funny to me. We just we just want to be deep and and sit and use big words. And I called. I saw a dude on Facebook post a video. His video was two minutes long, and he said, "I want to pray for you guys. First of all, I, I called on every prince. Of, you know, it's a two minute prayer. First of all, and you're getting right into pulling down principalities for people you don't even know what they struggle with. You know, you're opening. You know, it doesn't make any sense. You don't even know what these things are, and you're addressing them. Because what? We want to be flashy. We want to be deep. We want everybody to call us. Amen. It's not of God. We need to get back to the fundamentals. Get back to the basics. Too many of us, the last time that we read, that we even went through certain Bible stories is, in, is back in Bible school when we were little kids. Sunday school. Early in the morning, 
I learned about David. I learned about, you know, a lot of those things that we learned were just dumbed down because we were little kids. It's your responsibility as you grow to go back. Because listen, with every new level of maturity, there's a new revelation in the word of God. With every new level of maturity, spiritual maturity, even in, it, listen, when you begin to grow in character and you go back to the scriptures, there's a new revelation. With every new growth in your life, there's a new revelation in the scripture waiting for you. But we don't know that. We think we read one Bible verse. I don't got to read it again for the next 15 years because I know it. Just because you memorize it does not mean it's operational in your life. So I wanted to, to bless you guys with that. And tell you, as we're getting into the new year, spend this month getting back to the fundamentals. Don't be too deep about it. There's a, there's a time and a place for everything. Amen. Time and a place. Be, be, be rooted. If you don't know, if you still, if you slip sometimes and you don't know if God loves you, that means you need to go back and learn about the love of God. Go back and learn about the blood of Jesus. Go back and learn about these fundamental doctrines. Learn about them. Study. Study. Why, why should I be holy? Study. Amen. Why should I give? Study. Fundamentals. Fundamentals. Amen. I'm going to let you guys go. With that being said, I'm going to tell you, I told you guys I was opening a store on my website and I was going to redo some of my old teachings that I put on YouTube. But I've actually decided against that. I'm not going to redo the old teachings because they're already there on YouTube. I don't want to have to duplicate them, you know, and, and it not be... And I have the oil that it had on it, you know. If I'm led to reteach them again, I'll reteach them. But I'm going to do a series. I'm doing a series on these six fundamental doctrines of Christ. I, I want it out by December, by January 1st. I'm going to have it uploaded. Teachings in depth. We're going to go through scriptures on my website. And then I told you guys I'm beginning a class. I'm starting a class on deliverance. Is I've, I've structured it out. It's going to have 18 videos next year, January 20th. I'm releasing it, and, it's, and we're going to get into deliverance. It's going to be awesome. So I want you guys to prepare yourself. Our upcoming three-day fast is next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. God is going to move in a great way. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to say about it, but be encouraged. Be blessed. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Say, God, give me the grace to go back. Give me the grace to humble myself and learn. Amen. Give me the grace. Make me hungry. Give me an appetite for the things of God. Jesus said that what? My meat is to do the will of the Father. Give me an appetite for the will of God. Give me an appetite to read, an appetite to study, an appetite to pray and fast, an appetite to learn with humility. And you'll see God begin to, to do great things in your life. I love each and every one of you. Keep me in prayers. Tomorrow is Thursday. I will be on to pray with you guys or to teach. I don't know. Either pray or teach. Um, but, but I will be on tomorrow night. What time is it right now? I'm going to try to be on tomorrow around 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Love you guys. Speak to you soon. Be blessed.